Hey guys, welcome to Picture Book Drama where it is everything in entertainment. I am your host, Sean, your video and comic guru, and welcome to Fan Films. Happy to be at my storage unit here in Chicago, Illinois, but we're going to be introducing our next fan film by Sandy Clara called Batman Dead End. This movie came out in 2003 and to me is one of the best renditions of Batman that has ever been put to film. This has Clark Bartram as Batman and I mean he is amazing. Once you see the opening and just the production value on this, you're going to wonder why Hollywood hasn't made a Batman film like this. Hopefully the Ben Affleck version will be just like it. I just saw the trailer for the new and final trailer which I do have up on my site right now. Hopefully you guys had a chance to see it. But without any further ado, let's get started with Batman Dead End. Enjoy. Murder and mayhem in Gotham City. The mastermind, the Joker, has once again escaped from Arkham Asylum. And this is Shannon Carr reporting from Arkham Asylum, where the scene can only be described as a ramp. Two guards brutally beat and criminal mastermind, the Joker, has escaped from his maximum security holding cell. At this time, Dr. Harley Quinn is still missing. Police Chief James Gordon could not be reached for comment. coming from someone who runs around in the dark, wearing a cape and a mask. We both wear masks. Look at my face. This is who I am. My mask is permanent. You have a choice. You made your choice a long time ago, Joker. No! You did this to me, and you condemned me to that asylum like some bastard child that you refused to take responsibility for! That's why you'll never kill me, Bats. You made me... Daddy! And criminal scum like you... made me... <laughs>
called up Simon and I said, I want to make a Batman movie. And he goes, okay. And I said, I want there to be the Joker in it and Alien and he's going to fight the Predator. That's going to be the big finale of this movie is Batman is going to fight the Predator, just like in the comic book. When I first got involved with Sandy and Simon on this project, I knew nothing about comic book characters or that whole fantasy world. And as I got to know more and more of the players, I realized the only way we were going to pull this off is with people who were genuinely comic book fans. I don't know. I don't know. I it's great. When Sandy first came to me with this project, and basically he told me that uh, he wanted a Batman, Predator, Alien, at night, in the rain, I'm like, yeah, this is not gonna happen. <laughs> I wanted to make a film that was very true to the comic book. I'm a huge Batman fan. Uh, I love the comic books, and I thought it would be a really interesting challenge to bring a very realistic Batman to the screen, to do something that was very human and very real. When I first walked in to the audition and I saw Sandy bounding down the steps to run out to uh, greet me, I looked at him and I said, I think I really like this guy. I could tell right from the beginning. And he and I hit it off like that from that point on. Clark was fantastic. He really got the character. And he was so natural. In, in the opening sequence when he pulls on his gloves and he goes like this and you hear the, the leather creak, he actually did that. I showed him tons of comic books. I wanted a Batman that could actually move, be able to move his head and, and, and move like a cat, you know, move like he could pounce. When I saw the, the ad for the audition, it said casting hero and villain, and the villain was like an uh, insane villain character. I, I could do that. Uh, and then I got the script emailed to me, and I was like, Batman, Joker, Amy, Predator, what the hell is this? I thought they sent me the wrong script. Sandy called me up and asked me to come over to the shop, and I put on uh, the suit before it was painted and finished. He kind of gave me two different kinds of direction. He would uh, verbally tell me what he wanted. He would also uh, reinforce that by physically showing me. He would get up and say, Kurt, this is what I want. The Predator does this. Just again, just as you're standing up, spread them. There you go. When we rehearsed, uh, Sandy was very specific about what he wanted from hey. the alien. Action! Yes. It was actually very uh, helpful to have a director who knew exactly what he wanted. Sandy had a very specific idea in mind for what he wanted from the Joker. I really understood what he was going for of this whole Joker blames Batman, which I thought was a really cool thing. I wanted the Joker to play more evil and twisted than funny. When a villain is too over the top and too funny, it, he, he becomes less threatening. And I wanted Andrew to be very threatening. I wanted to do something that was a lot more streamlined, a lot thinner, and a lot tighter to his face um, so he could get more expression through the cowl. Um, I wanted the cowl to almost become part of him. The look with the white contact lenses for protection and so forth, I thought it would incorporate as one whole piece of the cowl. I called up Henry Alvarez and I said, uh, I'm gonna make this Batman movie. And he said that he wanted to sculpt the cowl and I was just so stoked. This is my mentor, this is the guy that I've looked up to my whole career. Well, he called me up and he says, look, I got another project I wanna do and I wanna come talk to you about it. He started telling me about this concept of Batman and the Predators and the aliens and the Jokers. And I'm looking at him and is this really possible? I said, man, what about the suits and all these other characters? There's a lot of special effects that'll be involved in it. He was very uh, assured that he could pull it off. Sandy was very uh, animated about how, how he wanted things done and, and uh, he was always jumping around. But he knew what he wanted and uh, that was one of the things I liked. We ended up with two capes that we shot with. We had a, a long cape uh, for when he's up on the uh, top of the buildings with the gargoyle and blowing in the wind and that kind of stuff. And then we had a shorter fighting cape that wasn't quite as, as long and, and cumbersome. When I life-casted Clark um, and brought 
Henry the Life Cast, when he first roughed it out and laid it up, there were some very interesting things going on there. I remember I wanted the ears to kind of curve in a little bit to make them look a little bit more menacing. The brows to be, you know, down a little more to give him that real, like, angry look. I think he's, he pretty much has a firm grasp on what Batman should be. My approach to the whole costume was, was very utilitarian. And then when Sandy first started talking about this, just putting a guy in a spandex suit, basically, I was like, well, I don't really know if that's going to work. It progresses. He shows us the Batman suit, the cowl, and everything on the actor. He's working with the actor. I'm floored. Right? I'm seeing they uh, this works. It worked out really well. I was uh, I was really impressed uh, with Clark and how he looked in the suit. It was like Batman coming to life and was human. Seeing him on camera, the expression that he applied to Batman, his body, the way he moved, it was like he totally became Batman. I've heard people standing around just saying, that is Batman. He is Batman. To me, there is no other Batman. Clark is Batman. Clark is Batman. Clark is Batman. They finally got a Batman who looks like he can kick the hell out of somebody. I am Batman. And that's what Clark has brought to it. He's brought it to life. I wanted the look of the film to have almost like a black and white movie quality to it. So the palette for the film uh, was very minimal. I had several discussions with Vince about how film noir-ish I wanted it to look. Originally, when we on the first meetings we met, he had these great storyboards. When I saw the storyboards, I was like, okay, this guy knows what he wants. Before we even started shooting frame one, we had gone through a uh, location. We worked out what camera angles we wanted to use, what lenses we wanted to use, how each shot was going to look. I wanted it to be very dark and brooding and rainy. Sandy told me, it will be cold, it will be dark, it will be nasty, will you be ready? It was so cold and dark and wet. It was dark and cold and wet. It was dark. It was pretty cold and wet. It was wet and it was cold and uh, it was dark. It was actually fun because it made me become Batman. If you're gonna make a Batman movie, it has to convey the grittiness and the inherent darkness of Gotham City and of Batman and his environment. My idea for the fight was to do something that was more of a bare knuckle brawl, visceral, guttural, in your face kind of fight rather than have people flying around on wires. It started with his original concept and script uh, where there were certain things that were definitely laid out stunt-wise. We determined early on story-wise that this was a down and dirty, gritty street fight between Batman and Predator. We rehearsed quite a bit. Uh, Scott Rhodes and Scott Leva got Clark and Kurt out there about once a week. We had the luxury of like maybe eight or nine days of rehearsal with the two actors who were very, very good, very cooperative. They never needed to be doubled. Doing all my own stunts was actually the only way I would have had it. I jumped off the buildings, I ran in the walls, I fell into the ground, I cut my knees up, I was bruised, I was beat up, but I would not have had it any other way. I wanted to stay away from complicated wire work. There are wire shots in the film, but they are not in the fight. Scott Leva was instrumental in coordinating all that. Ratcheting somebody out of frame is pretty simple. Dropping somebody into frame, grabbing and ratcheting them both out at the same time in sync uh, was a little bit of a mathematical equation. It was a bit of a challenge, but all in all, I, I like the overall effect in the end. Sandy comes from an artist's background. He's a talented artist, sculptor. Sandy sculpted the Predators. It takes forever to do that. I wanted to make this predator seem a little bit more insect-like, you know, like a hornet. I painted him bright yellow to give him that real yellow jacket, insectoid kind of look. Visualizes everything. That's that's where he gets his visual style from. It's from his from his art background. Drawing is one of the most integral and important parts of how I communicate with the cast and crew. Everything is sketched out, everything is drawn out. We had predator blades, we had alien heads that exploded, there was mechanical jaws that had to be met. That blade weapon, which is my favorite, which is uh, something that Sandy designed. Having the ability to draw makes me a better communicator.
I'm a big fan of the animated series. And people always say, yeah, that's great, but you can't bring that type of comic book art that Alex Ross looked into reality, and um, we did it. I think it's the best Batman look yet. Sandy nailed it in terms of concept, because whenever you bring a book or a comic book to screen, there are certain conceptions that go along with it. It's a comic book come to life for the first time. You actually get a good sense it is Batman. Sandy has so much passion for what he did. It was just incredible to see, and, and that passion went out to everybody on the set. I think directing is a privilege. Um, and I don't take that for granted. When you're on the set and you're shooting and the actors are there, you're, you're seeing it in the monitor right before your eyes. And it's exactly how you envisioned it. Months and months of preparation, you're there and they're doing it. That is a very special moment to me. And cut, you! Hey, hey, get him more. Oh. I want to block this quickly. Let's get his shoes oh, and stuff on him. His enthusiasm just like, really was something you could cling on to and grab onto and just ride along with him. And you had Simon who was kind of the steady, even guy throughout the whole thing. And actually to see Simon on the set, you almost thought he was a PA because he was doing absolutely everything. You wouldn't think he was an executive producer. There was so little crew. I did wind up building the rain towers and a lot of the creature stuff. Simon is actually the guy that's nuts, uh, not me because he's the one who, after I say what I want to do, and it's Batman, and it's Predator, and it's all these effects, and it's all this stuff, and I have $30,000 to make this picture, he's the guy that says, okay. So, to me, that's somebody who's more out of their mind than I am. But he and Darren pulled it off. Everything I wanted was there, and it really came together. It was really a great experience. Working with Sandy just made everything jive and a lot easier. His knowledge of the subject matter and his knowledge of the camera, his experience, and it all worked real great. The good thing about having a director like Sandy is, like I said, he has the energy, the enthusiasm, and the knowledge. And when somebody leads from front and they prove they're not a hack or just hacking something out, that amps up everybody else. Everybody else attacks their job a little bit more energetically because they know the director really cares and you know everybody wants to put something good on screen. We're a little bit above then we see Batman. We need to go straight on or even a little bit under. I really had a good time on this show and I was very impressed with uh, the level of professionalism and how many extremely talented people Sandy culled together to work on this. If there's one thing I learned very early in my career uh, working with Stan Winston he told me that the biggest key to his success in this industry was that he always surrounded himself with very talented people. With everyone's help, we made a great project. It's phenomenal. It was an overall fun experience, except for the freezing cold rain. Get you, Sandy. The sun comes up and uh, it's the last day of shooting and everybody's gone. It's like, well, this kind of sucks. It's, uh, it's all over. And then once it's gone, it's, it's like, come on, let's do a sequel. I'm never glad it's over. I always wanted to go on. I, yeah, I wish it was a feature. All in all, the experience was just amazing. Absolutely incredible. The people that worked on it, from the PAs to Sandy to everyone in between, were just very passionate about the film because they are all true, hardcore Batman fans. The dedication of all of these people coming together made this something very special. There's moments in the evolution of any art form that redefine the boundaries of what's possible in that particular medium. And I think this film is one of those moments. So what do you guys think of that? That movie's pretty sweet, wasn't it? I don't know why Hollywood can't make a Batman that looks like that. Someone who's just in a costume, not in armor and all that crap. I've seen the uh, final trailer for Batman v Superman, which I mentioned in the intro, and it looks like that's going to be the closest adaption to a comic book we're going to get. But let me know what you guys think about this movie right here. And also, I'm going to put Sandy Clark's uh, info right here so you guys can check out his other stuff. But hit me in that comment section. Hit me up on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm also on Tumblr now. But until then, I'm Sean, your video and comic guru. Talk to you guys later. Peace.